I've heard a lot of people say Revit is great for documenting plans, but that it's really not that great of a design tool. And yeah, there's a little truth to that. If you want to adjust a door size while drafting with a pencil, you just scribble around a little bit. In AutoCAD, you have the stretch commands. In SketchUp, you have shape handles. With Revit, you hit Edit Type, Duplicate, type in the new name based on whatever it's changing to, hit Enter, scroll down, change the width, and then when you realize you actually wanted it three inches larger, you go and do it all again. Yeah, it's mildly clunky. But Revit has shape handles, and you can set up a family with instance parameters so you can adjust a whole bunch of properties without having to dive into the menus. So for shits and giggles, I made some basic door and window families that had width and height set as instance parameters with shape handles, and found it was actually surprisingly useful. I could just type in the different widths directly in the properties panel. I could use the align tool to stretch the door to sculpturally shape or fit an opening I wanted, or I could hit tab on the edge and it would move the door without adjusting the size. I could also drag around the heights and width in elevation, and it just felt much more intuitive, like I was in CAD or SketchUp. Modeling this way in Revit does take a little getting used to, but overall, laying out a plan just felt much more enjoyable because you didn't have to repeatedly jump into properties menus, renaming and organizing as you went, but you're still leveraging all the BIM capabilities that Revit offers. So I thought, how much would Revit explode? if I built a whole library of families that heavily leveraged these instance parameters. I set up a whole slew of my standard doors, French doors, double doors. Then I went a little next level and made glass sliding doors, pocket doors, and a tilted door, all three of which actually open, saving me a bunch of extra time modeling in 3ds Max. I pretty much did the same thing with my windows. Fixed, casement, awning, double casements, all controllable just by typing values in the properties. With this setup, I can draw almost my entire elevations without having to go into any edit properties dialogs. Over time, that is a huge time saver. So since I made my life easier by doing this with the doors and windows, I started to rethink what other stupid little things I do that repeatedly waste time, but could be built into a set of families. I'm sure many of you agree that out of the box casework in Revit is a total pain. So I made a pre-assembled base cabinet plus counter family that I can stretch to whatever length and just type in however many cabinets I want and instantly have some lovely contemporary flat cabinets and counters. I did the same thing with tall cabinets, uppers, built-in closet units, sort of all the standard ones. I've also put together a couple standard vanity and kitchen sink configurations that are adjustable with shape handles. I even have a super adjustable waterfall island that looked great in 3D. I can immediately get a sense of whether a layout will work in 2D and then jump into section or Enscape or Max and produce some really neat deliverables without having to assemble individual counters, sinks, base cabinets, and uppers. At this point, I was so far down the rabbit hole that I figured I might as well remodel a few of my main building components like furniture, appliances, and fixtures. While this could probably be a never-ending exercise, the models I've made so far have been really worth it. I made some sweet toilet models that actually look contemporary and not out of the 60s, but they also have some invisible reference planes so I can super quickly get my clearances when laying out a bath. As simple as it sounds, that's been a killer feature. I've got a nice freestanding tub, floating shower seat, a freestanding fireplace. I've got a linear fireplace and a fire pit, both complete with little ceramic fireballs that actually array based on the total size. I've got a couple of adjustable 2D tree symbols to soften up my plans. I've got a pre-assembled trellis that's either a four post stand up alone setup or a two post off a building. It's got fully adjustable beams and trellis members. I did a linear pool with a spa and a vertical screen. These are all common things that you can build in Revit, but I've built them as single assemblies that are very easy to adjust on the fly, but also able to quickly get a lot of variation in the design. So this was a lot of Revit modeling over a lot of time. But when I started, I figured if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right and lay down some standards to avoid the issues that many of the free families have that you find online. Number one, everything has to look consistent. I hate that every model you download looks different, but that's sort of just what happens when everything's authored by hundreds of different people without standards. My families will be clean, contemporary, and all look good together. Number two, my families will all use the same materials and a consistent naming scheme. For example, when I'm setting up an aluminum material on Max, I don't want to have to go and apply it to four differently spelled aluminums throughout the project. 
I will have just one aluminum material used throughout my entire library, and they won't have any of the junky tiling bitmaps that Revit ships with that are virtually useless in my workflow. Number three, my families will be reliable and not blow up when you make common sense adjustments. Enough said. Number four, they should be useful throughout SD, DD, and CDs. There will be some families from manufacturers that you need to swap out for some specific technical reasons, but as much as possible, everything should tag and schedule like traditional families so you don't have to double back on your work if you don't want to. Number five, documentation. I was gonna document the main parameters that control all the different settings in the families. It shouldn't be a guessing game about what parameter controls what. So I'm making these families available in their entirety as a schematic design toolkit that you can purchase and download. If you aren't in need of a full library, I've broken the collection into smaller groups of models that you can go through and cherry pick based on your own needs. I'm not sure how they fit into all workflows or building types. I use them for high-end custom residential homes and they've been a total game changer. I do have a few free ones on my website you can download and take for a spin and see if they're right for you. And maybe these exact families aren't right for you and that's totally okay. But I so strongly recommend you thinking about Revit families different than just being 3D models that have to perfectly match some real world product. Revit has all the features to be a fantastic design tool. It just isn't necessarily set up that way out of the box. Next time you're frustrated with Revit for whatever reason, I challenge you to try and think of a better way to get the task done. Because I promise you, if you're frustrated, someone else was before you. And there's a good chance someone in the world came up with a solution that might be a total game changer for you. Or you might come up with a solution that's a game changer for somebody else. Which is where I'm at with my toolkit. They've been great families for me, and hopefully they solve some problems for you as well. If you like anything I'm saying, I would love a little thumbs up, a comment, or a subscribe, maybe all of the above. Please let me know if you have any questions or anything specific that you'd like to see. Thank you so much, and hope you have some fun with this. Cheers!